Okay, projectile motion can be as simple as a cannon being shot off of a cliff. Without gravity, the ball would just follow this path. But with gravity, it's going to follow this curved parabolic path. And gravity is going to pull it down, 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 down. So it's going to get faster and faster and faster as it gets goes down. It could also be as cool as a guy jumping his motorbike across a ditch. And that is also parabolic motion. And you see here his parabolic path. And here he's at his maximum height from where he took off. And he makes an angle from where he left. So some things we should remember about projectile motion is that your x velocity is constant. Your x velocity stays the same the whole time. So no matter where I'm going, I'm going the same speed horizontally because there's nothing speeding me up or slowing me down horizontally. But vertically, gravity works down, so I'm getting slower and slower and slower, as you can see more easily on the next slide. This slide shows how the speeds of the parabola or the projectile change over time. So here at the beginning, it's got an initial velocity. That's its initial velocity. It makes an angle. And so you take that and you break it up into its x and its y components. And then you see the x vector stays the same the whole time. The x vector is always the same length the whole time. But the y vector is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until at the top, because remember when we were going up and we were coming down at the very top, our velocity was zero. And that's the same thing happens in projectile motion. Your vertical velocity is just like free fall. And then you go faster and faster and faster. And you're going in the opposite direction that you were going. Um, you're going in the opposite direction you were going to start with. And so at the end, your y velocity is the negative of your initial y velocity, just like it was when we went up and we had our initial velocity. And when we came down, our final velocity was the negative of the initial velocity. So let's put this to work on a couple of problems. A ball rolls off a table that's one meter high with an initial velocity of two seconds. How far away from the table does it land? So here's a picture showing what it would look like. And the picture shows that it's rolling off the table two meters per second, and it's going to follow this curved path falling down. It's going to follow that curved path. It's one meter high, and we're trying to find out how far away from the table it's going to fall. So here's a strategy for setting it up. Make a table and put your horizontal on one side and your vertical on the other. And the reason why we're going to totally split these up is because we can only use the horizontal information for horizontal calculations. We can only use the vertical information for vertical calculations. And so our horizontal vectors or variables, we have our x velocity, time, and distance. Our verticals are our initial y velocity, our time, our distance. In this case, this distance is our height. Okay, that's always going to be your height. Um, acceleration, which is going to be a positive or negative 9.8, because we're working under gravity. Vertically, we're working under gravity. And we're going to have a final velocity in the y direction. So vertically, we're going to use our kinematics equations. So those are the same equations we were using at the beginning. 
horizontally though since we're going at constant speed we can use distance equals rate times time this is because we're going at constant speed so if we set up this vertical horizontal table for every problem then we at least have a way to to organize our information so we know that our table is one meter high so that's going to go here in our height one meter and it has an initial velocity of two seconds well shoot what direction is that two two meters per second let's see oh look it was rolling off the table and it was moving vertically or horizontally so that's going to be our initial horizontal velocity and it wasn't moving up and down at all so its initial vertical velocity is going to be zero meters per second we know that it's at a height of one meters okay since it's falling and its initial velocity is zero we're going to use the positive form of 9.8 so on the horizontal side you know, we're trying to find this horizontal distance, but on the horizontal side, we're missing two variables. So what we need to do is use the vertical side. And the beautiful thing is this time here goes from side to side. So this time is the same on both sides because it's moving up and down. At the same time, it's moving sideways. So we're going to try to find the time using our vertical information. So we have initial y, time, displacement acceleration which equation do we have that has those variables and no v final in it that would be x equals one half a t squared plus v naught t but since our initial y velocity is zero that term goes away so one meter is equal to one half times nine point eight t squared Solving for t, we find out it is 0.45 seconds. So that is also the same time it takes it to go horizontally, 0.45 seconds. And so now we can use distance equals rate times time. Our x is equal to our horizontal rate, our horizontal velocity, 2 times 0.45 so it is going to land 0.9 meters from the edge of the table. So as you can see, even though we were looking for things horizontally, we had to use the vertical information to get enough information on the horizontal side to solve for it. And on the next slide, we have a similar type problem. So a bolt ball is going to roll off a counter that's 1.3 meters high and lands 0.8 meters from the edge so now we know that horizontal distance how fast was the ball rolling when it left the table so now we don't have that initial y velocity or that initial x velocity we're looking for it and now we know the two distances so let's put what we know into our horizontal vertical table so here's our table let's fill in what we know we know that we're going 0.8 meters horizontally so let's go put that in and we know that we are trapped we have a vertical height of 1.3 meters so let's put that in for the vertical x since it wasn't going up and down at all to begin with up here it's moving purely horizontally so it has no y component so our initial y velocity is going to be zero meters per second and that's going to make it so that we can use a positive 9.8 to find our our information so again horizontally we're looking for the horizontal velocity that's our question that's what we're looking for we don't have enough information horizontally so what we're gonna do is use our vertical information again we don't have a v final y we don't know that so once again we can use x equals one half a t squared 
plus v naught t, and our initial y velocity is zero, so we don't need that. So 1.3 is equal to 1 half, 9.8 t squared, so t comes out to 0.515. Five seconds. And so our time is 0.515 seconds for it to land, which can also go over to the horizontal side. Remember, time is the only thing that can go over to the horizontal side. So 0.515 seconds. And now we can use distance equals rate times time. Yay! And so our distance, 0.8 zero meters is equal to our rate which is v naught x that's what we're looking for times our time 0.515 seconds and so we get that our initial velocity is 1.55 seconds and there we go we have our initial x velocity so that answers this first question but what was its vertical velocity as it hit the ground? So now we did erase this before, this v naught y, but now we actually want to know what it is. So let's put it back. We're looking for v naught y. And now that we know the time, we can find that. We can use v final equals v initial plus at. And our final is what we're looking for. And that's going to equal our initial 0 plus 9.8 times 0.515 seconds. And so our final velocity is in the y direction is going to equal 5.05 .05 meters per second. Now this last question, what's its overall speed, really is just the vector addition. We know in our... So this last question isn't that bad. It's just asking us, what is the speed of the ball right here? It's just a vector addition problem. We know that it's going horizontally at 1.55 meters per second. And it's going vertically, it's falling, so it's going down 5.05 .05 meters per second. And they want us to find the resultant of those two. So we know the x component, we know the y component, so we use the Pythagorean theorem. 1.55 squared plus 5.05 squared is equal to c squared, and that will give us... And so the answer to our overall speed, c equals... 5.28 meters per second and it's going down and the way we drew it to the right. We could find that angle. We could find that angle if we wanted if they asked us but they didn't ask us but what what would we use if we had to find that angle? Yes indeed folks it would be the inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of our y velocity over our x velocity and I'm not going to do that.